Good morning. Uh, my name is David Wild. I'm a professor of management at Southeastern Louisiana University. You heard the, the bio, and I'm always like, I'm a, I'm a professor and I'm a soccer coach. So what, what's the priority? And uh, I'm, I'm going to be pleased that they're going to stream this, because I, I know I was joking with my dean. It's like, I'm a professor in Louisiana. I'm on the same panel with the four-star general, about to be the vo vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> So, and I'm making it back for my kids' little league playoff tomorrow. Uh, next slide. I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to thank um, all the people at the uh, at the uh, IBM Center for the Business of Government because they've been very instrumental in helping me advance <coughs> a stream of research that's just been uh, phenomenal since the year 2000, dealing with uh, aspects of e-commerce. One thing led to to another. Uh, I became an RFID expert in 2003. That's a long time ago in RFID land, and uh, proposed a report, next slide, uh, for IBM, and it came out October 2005, and now we've surpassed uh, 80,000 downloads of that report. And boy, I wish I got the 99 cents for iTunes downloads, but anyway, it's a good idea. So uh, today, next slide. I uh, was pleased to see that uh, you, the, the, the report that you have in front of you today is entitled The Blogging Revolution, uh, Government in the Age of Web 2.0. That was not the title uh, of the report when I proposed it to uh, IBM a little over a year ago, because Web 2.0 as a term was just uh, uh, beginning to come into existence. But uh, we're going to talk about a number of aspects of the blogging revolution uh, this morning. I'm so pleased uh, that all of you have, have come. Is this technically the 4th of July weekend? My students have a debate about that with 4th of July on Wednesday. So next slide. Let me reassure you that uh, I feel bad. I feel bad being on the panel with, with gentlemen from Marriott, <laughs> even joking. But I have a common thing talking about uh, technology to, to perhaps uh, a, a varied tech-savvy audience, uh, from running the gamut from uh, CIOs down to people who, are, or who have my wife's Unabomber-like fear of technology, being married to an e-commerce guy. Uh, but this, uh, I, I like to say that I go down the middle. This is uh, talking about technology uh, uh, from, a, from a, a strategic perspective. And the great thing about blogging and all the Web 2.0 technologies is basically all you have to know is how to type, and you can participate. Next slide. You know, uh, there's been a great deal of focus on, you know, how all uh, how the internet is changing and how all this uh, is 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 coming into focus. And a lot of attention was paid uh, last December when when Time Magazine made an interesting choice for its person of the year, just as it had back in 1983 when it chose the computers as the, uh, as the machine of the year, last year all of us won. You, uh, if you looked in the, in the mirror cover of Time Magazine, you were the person of the year. And the reason for that is what is developing as the, as the larger Web 2.0 revolution. Next slide. And. You know, if there's a poster boy of the Web 2.0 revolution, it's this gentleman. Does anybody recognize this? Okay, this gentleman is Judd Lapley. He has the mo number one most viewed, number one top rated all time YouTube video. He, he, his video called The Evolution of Dance. How many of you have seen this? Okay, it's a favorite of my son, my 12 year old son. And uh, what he does is six minutes, and it's very entertaining. Now, I hope you didn't. I hope you didn't do it on on company or, or government time. But if you were watching this gentleman's video, he goes from Elvis, Chubby Checker, John Travolta, uh, MC Hammer. He goes and, and beyond that. That's about where my pop music knowledge uh, goes goes out of play. But uh, he goes through this, and it's a wonderful thing. And I'm sure he's available for all the IBM corporate speaking events. Uh, okay, next slide. Uh, I, this is original to this report. Uh, what I talk about is, is, is this virtual family mosaic. And I tried to incorporate graphics from the report, so when you go back to your, your office, uh, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can reference these. But uh, talking about how all these technologies fit together, we've, we've, we've lived in the world of the internet. 
Now we're living in the world of Web 2.0. And Web 2.0 includes a number of different technologies, uh, including blogging as probably the, it's hard to say, the most established of these. But uh, social networking, user-generated media uh, are included in these. Next slide. And it's very interesting. Uh, just some phenomenal metrics come into play when you're talking about w w the effect of Web 2.0. October 2006, the web passed a huge milestone. We had the creation of the, of the 100 millionth website. Uh, just phenomenal numbers. Next slide. Uh, now, if you look at the growth of, of, of the web, what has taken off, particularly in the last two to three years, has been the growth in, in, in these social networking, user-generated media blogging websites. And if you've, got, uh, if you've got a teenager at home, you know about Facebook, MySpace, okay. Go into, our, go into the labs at my college, any of your universities where sons and daughters are paying $30,000 a year tuition. You walk into the computer lab, half the computers are on Facebook or MySpace, okay. That is where our youth are existing. Uh, if you look at uh, the growth of YouTube in terms of the, the amount of content up there and in terms of co companies and media companies seeing YouTube and other competing video sites or setting up their own video sites as a way of alternate distribution of content and drawing, uh, drawing attention uh, to themselves and to their programming. Uh, next slide. Okay, I debated to put the Col Colbert picture up there. It's not in the report. But uh, we have the use of wikis. Uh, most well-known wiki, of course, is Wikipedia. And I know since the report was posted on the, uh, on the IBM Center's website, I've already had an email exchange with uh, a gentleman from uh, the Victoria State Government in Australia. And we were talking about the, the accuracy of, of Wikipedia versus the Encyclopedia Britannica. And in academic circles, there, there's, you know, it, it's a, it's a one side or the other question, in terms of do you accept Wikipedia as a resource? And more and more, what's been being proven is that as there is more uh, traffic on Wikipedia, what's interesting is not only are there more comprehensive articles, and I know there, there, there's stories about people in Silicon Valley. It's what they do on their lunch hours: create Wikipedia entries and have contests as to see who can add the most to Wikipedia. What's also interesting is the middle slide there. When you talk about the average number of edits done on a Wikipedia article, so with the more with the more editing being done, uh, the more accurate hopefully that content will be. I mean, there's been a great deal of attention paid to Wikipedia just in the last 24 hours with the the death of the the wrestler and his family and the. Did Vince McMahon update the website? You know, so it's uh, very interesting stuff, the social media. Okay, next slide. And talking about the rise of user-generated media, all this is growing faster than the Internet itself, and it's propelling the Internet into a new realm and a new environment. Next slide. How many are familiar with Second Life? Okay. This, uh, this has a mention in the report it, uh, it, it, it's probably one of the more dynamic environments uh, of Web 2.0 in terms of talking about this 3D virtual environment that is very attractive to universities and to corporations as a training ground. Uh, one, one comment was that unlike a, uh, a conference call, you can't be doing you can't be doing email and going off to get coffee. You have to be engaged. And so companies are more and more turning to this. A hundred universities are setting up classrooms and whole campuses online. My neck of the woods, down near New Orleans, uh, we have the University of New Orleans that is setting up a virtual campus on, uh, on Second Life specifically to continue operations in case bad things happen in our neck of the woods. So there's very interesting stuff being done uh, in, in terms of the whole aspect of, of Second Life. Next slide. We even have interest in government and, and politicians 
primarily now from a campaign standpoint. There was some, some attention paid to Second Life with the new Democratic Congress and Speaker Pelosi and the, the initial uh, first hundred hours being done both in the real capital, but directions this way, okay, the real capital, and then the Second Life virtual capital. Now, next slide. To move on to, to blogging, and a blog is an online journal that can be updated regularly and with entries displayed in typically in chronological order so you can you can quickly scan uh, scan the the history of the blog and and there's there's some very easy to use software out there it's available some proprietary software some free software but again all you have to do is to be able to type to establish a blog and what it is is it is transformational because so much of the time we think of web pages as being static. We think of web pages as being something that someone has to create. I have to know HTML in order to create a web page. Not anymore. With a blog and blog tools, you can do it by typing. And what's, what's changing is that we're, we're, we're making a more interactive internet and the role of content creator and reader are, are blurring in that. And so very interesting possibilities that are, that are derived from this. Next slide. If we look at the overall growth of blogging, and this chart ends in October 2006 just because of the closure of the report. Uh, the most recent numbers show you know, steady increase. What we were on a pace where the, the number of blogs, the entire what's termed blogosphere, was doubling roughly every three months. It's being extended about six months now. And of course, if we go on this current track, then you know, we'll all have a blog and no one will have time to read each other's blogs. Next slide. What's interesting is that this is a, an international, it's a worldwide phenomenon. In fact, if you look at the, if, if you look at the numbers on blogging, uh, it's been forecasted by next year, English will not be the most popular language of the blogosphere. We're going to see, we're going to see Japanese and Chinese uh, overtake it. It's interesting that Farsi has become the, uh, uh, entered the top ten languages of the blogosphere in the latest analysis. Next slide.